Number 10. Lou Eisenberg Lou Eisenberg is probably the least stupid of our winners on this list. That's because he feels that although he won $5 million at the age of 53 back in 1981 and was basically broken living in a mobile home when we last caught up with him in 2009 at the age of 81, he says he had a great life and wouldn't do anything differently if it was to do over. Sure, there were the ups and downs of being rich and being poor, having to pay alimony to his ex-wives, and getting in trouble by betting too much at the track. But Eisenberg has no regrets and says he considers himself a lucky guy who lived to the fullest. Okay then. Number 9. Etta May Urquhart In May 2011, 79-year-old retiree Etta May Urquhart won $51 million in the Mega Millions Lottery in California. Unfortunately, Mrs. Urquhart trusted her sweet son Ronnie Lee Orender to sign the winning ticket in front of the lottery officials because her hand was shaking too much. I guess she expected him to sign her name, but that would have been illegal, right? So by signing the ticket, the selfless son became the winner. Of course, Orender promised to take care of his family, but he quickly fixed things to his own liking, picking up the $32.3 million lump sum. He bought his mom a Lincoln SUV, gave her about $125,000 in cash and paid a few expenses for her. Then he turned and spent millions on himself and his daughters before turning into a pretty smart lottery winner himself, investing millions of dollars which his mother and stepfather weren't allowed to touch. The poor naive mother sued her son for the full amount, plus punitive damages, fraud, conspiracy to commit fraud, and financial elder abuse, among other things. Number 8. Vivian Nicholson In 1961, British housewife Vivian Nicholson got all excited when her second husband, Keith Nicholson, a coal miner, won over 152,000 pounds, the equivalent of over 3 million pounds today, telling the media they were going to spend, spend, spend. Well, that's exactly what they did. They squandered their money and became famous in the tabloids for their chaotic life. In 1965, her husband died in a car accident, and Vivian had to fight her husband's estate for part of what was left of the money. Then, she relocated to Malta after assaulting a police officer and married another dude, Brian Wright, who also died in a car accident. Can you believe that one? Vivian had so many problems, it'd be too long to list them all here. Suffice it to say, she was addicted to booze, narcotics, and spending. Her fifth husband, yeah, there were two more, died of a drug overdose. Vivian herself died of a stroke in 2015 at the age of 79 and also suffered from dementia. What a life! Number 7. Gerald Muswagen Gerald Muswagen of Winnipeg, Canada is another perfect example of great news turning into a nightmare. When he won a $10 million jackpot in the Super 7 lottery, the poor uneducated man could have had his life changed for the better, but he wasn't prepared to deal with the windfall in an intelligent manner. He blew almost all the money in less than four years, buying himself a huge house that he turned into a self-proclaimed party pad, where he consumed insane amounts of drugs and alcohol. He got into all sorts of problems with the law, including a few sexual assault charges that landed him in jail more than once. Eventually, when he lost all his money, he had to go back to work doing heavy lifting for minimum wage to help support his girlfriend and six children. Tragically, on October 2, 2005, Muswagon hanged himself in his parents' garage, turning into one of the saddest lottery-winning stories ever. Number 6. Jamie and Abby Hort When British couple Jamie and Abby Hort won 50,000 pounds in the Channels Islands lottery, they started spending their winnings as if they were set for life. Buying designer clothes, splurging on holidays, of course they needed leisure time to rest from not having jobs and buying furniture and a giant telly for their 890 pound a month flat. Obviously, eight months later, the money was gone and they were complaining on social media that they couldn't afford the Christmas presents they wanted. So they applied for social assistance, which was refused to them. Big surprise. Since they couldn't afford their rent, they were evicted from two different places. Although they admit that they shouldn't have spent their money so quickly, they do whine to anyone that'll listen that they should get public help. This from a guy who, even before winning the lottery, was convicted of spitting in a woman's mouth because he wanted to transmit hepatitis C. What a charming young man, right? 
Number 5. John Ross Jr. In March 2012, John Ross Jr. won the California Lottery's Set for Life game when he scratched a winning ticket. The lottery promises $70,000 after taxes every year for the next 20 years, which according to Ross, would allow him to get his life together. This is implying, of course, that it was probably a mess before that. Well, a few months later, Ross had to bail himself out of jail because he was suspected of being linked to a stolen Honda Civic, which he apparently hid for a woman who stole the car. Ironically, one of the first things Ross had planned to buy with his winnings, which totaled over $2 million over 20 years, was a car. Some people just can't make a go of it, even when it's given to them on a silver platter. Number 4. Laura and Roger Griffiths In 2005, Laura and Roger Griffiths, a British couple, won a hefty 1.8 million pounds. That's enough money to be set for life if you're smart. But Laura and Roger were anything but smart. Eight years later, they had seven pounds left, give or take a few, and were separated. Why? Refer to the title of this video. And because there are a few scones short of a dozen, they blame everyone and their mother for their misery. Because, of course, it's the lottery's fault if they're divorced, broke, and miserable. It's everybody's fault but their own if they spent a third of their winnings on a new house, got Botox and other plastic surgery for Lara, revived a musical band of chums from university for Roger, bought handbags, holidays, cars, furniture, and a business, which went belly up, then Roger had an affair, and disappeared so that Lara wouldn't kill him when he rang her to tell her that they were broke. Luckily for Lara, a British tabloid, the Daily Mail, gave her a bit of money to tell her sad, sordid tale. Number 3. David Lee Edwards Only 12 years after raking in $27 million from the Powerball Lottery, Ashland, Kentucky native David Lee Edwards died completely broke and all alone in hospice care at the age of 58. Within five years of winning the crazy amount of money, drug addiction and insane spending left Edwards and his wife Shauna living in a storage unit contaminated with human feces. Edwards could have used the win to turn his life around, having bought an amazing home in a gated community. But apparently, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Shauna divorced Edwards and remarried, but he never amounted to anything. Number 2. Matt Miles when factory worker Matt Miles won a million pounds in the Euro Millions raffle, he didn't care that he had had poor credit. He didn't start by cleaning up his debt or his credit problems. No, he did what any idiot lottery winner does. He went on a seven-month bender with his brother Pete and several friends. During his round-the-world pub crawl, as the media called it, he spent 70,000 pounds on alcohol alone. And when he came back, surprise! He wasn't even able to get a mortgage on a house that he was hoping to rent out to tenants to cover the mortgage. Some people are just not born with two brain cells to rub together. Number 1. The Mukametsyanov Family Considered Russia's slumdog millionaires by the media when they won a million dollars in the lottery, the Mukametsyanov family was broke 15 years after winning the fortune. How did they manage that? By turning it into the worst possible cliché. They bought a luxury apartment in Ufa, an oil-rich city, got loaded on cheap vodka that they purchased by the box, and generally gave the rest to beggars on the street. First thing they knew, they couldn't afford groceries anymore. The head of the family eventually went back to working as a roofer, but the family barely makes ends meet. Ah, money.